Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I welcome all of you to the last session of Senior Project 1. <coughs> I'm not going to take uh, too much of time. Uh, I'm going to uh, list you the important things that I think you should be focusing on for the Senior Project 1 examination. After that, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me the questions and I will be answering those. As you know that Senior Project 1 uh, course is divided into two parts as far as final evaluation is concerned. One part is uh, the report that you have already submitted and it is being evaluated by the evaluation team at the moment. The weightage for this uh, Senior Project 1 report is 60 marks. Uh, remaining 40 marks are going to be uh, awarded based on your performance in the Senior Project 1 examination which will be held along with uh, the final examination of this semester. The final examination that you will receive on that day would comprise of 80 marks and it will be a two hours duration paper. Out of 80 marks, 20 marks would be for MCQ, 20 marks would be for true false and 40 marks would be for short and long questions. There will be three to four short to long questions. So 80 marks paper. Uh, of two hours duration, you will be able to, you should be able to easily complete the examination within uh, within given time of 120 minutes. Now as I have been mentioning throughout the course that for this examination, the most important part that you need to prepare is the lecture slides that are given on weekly basis plus the discussion that I have been doing. For MCQs, for true false and for most of the questions, it would be from the lecture slides that have been given to you. The question would be from there. The answer also is completely given there. Uh, there, uh, I will be coming to the other kind of questions as well, but you should prepare all the lecture slides and this is very little amount of material that you see there. This is very little amount of material. Each week there are no more than six, seven slides perhaps uh, and uh, probably the whole material should be no more than 100 lecture slides. Out of these 100 lecture slides, all the MCQs, all the true false and all other such kind of questions uh, should be coming. Now coming to the short and long questions. If you look at the lecture slide, you can divide the whole material into three important parts and each part would have some kind of question in it. The first part from where the short question or questions can come. Some lectures in the beginning before the analysis and some lectures in the end after design. You know there are some lectures which are about analysis, three to four lectures, then there are two lectures about the design. All the lectures before and after it except for literature review talk about various components uh, of any project report, the kind of things that you have also prepared for your project report. For example, what is scope statement? For example, what you should be writing an introduction. For example, what do we mean by the current status of the project? For example, uh, what do we mean by the abstract? For example, what do we mean by the uh, objectives and constraints? These kind of things in the first few lectures and in the last few lectures. General components of the report have been described. So some kind of question can come from these lectures like this. It would be a short question. It would be strictly from the lecture slides. You don't need to prepare anything outside lecture slides for this question. This question would be easily answered if you have understood the lecture slides and whatever we have discussed during the class. That is the first part that you should be focused on. The second part, referencing and literature review. There are a couple of lectures which talk about uh, how to carry out 
literature review how to study material why is it important to cite what are the things that we cite uh, what do we mean by copyright what do we mean by ethical research uh, what are different referencing styles uh, how they are different from each other why is it important to reference etc these kind of things at least two weeks uh, we dedicated to these kind of things. From this section, there can be a conceptual question, for example, to explain different referencing styles that we have studied, for example, uh, to describe what do we focus on in literature review, for example, to describe why is it important to conduct citations for ethical research, questions like this, or some kind of applied question can come. In that applied question, you can be asked to give differences between different referencing styles that we have studied. As you know, we have studied three major referencing styles, APA style, MLA style, and Chicago style. So you can be asked to explain the difference between them. Uh, you can be asked, you can be given examples, and you can be asked to find problems with them. You can be given examples and you can be asked to identify which example belongs to which referencing style. But we will not go outside the referencing styles that we have studied during the classes. Right? So some kind of applied question can come from referencing. Or conceptual question can come. If an applied question comes, it would be about the referencing styles that we had studied during the classes. This is second part. Third part. Third part is about analysis and design. During the analysis and design lectures, we talked about system development life cycle. Uh, we talked about conceptual analysis models. We talked about physical analysis model. We talked about interface design. We talked about hardware design. We talked about deployment. And we also talked about certain diagrams. There were four or five diagrams that we had discussed during the lectures. Remember in your report, you have been asked to draw many diagrams. I have been telling you this thing again and again. In your senior project one report, you have been asked to draw many diagrams. We are not asking you to question about any diagram that you have prepared in the project report. We will only ask you questions about the diagrams that we have studied in the classes. So if in the material there is only use case, just as an example, if in the material there is only use case, ER diagram, deployment diagram, data flow diagram, if only these diagrams are given there, our question would be about those. So look into the lecture slides. Identify which diagrams have been described in the lecture slides and prepare them. You can either have conceptual questions. For example, you can be asked to explain system development life cycle. You can be asked to explain why system development life cycle is important. You can be asked to explain what is the difference between analysis and design. You can be asked to explain the difference between conceptual and physical design. Uh, you can be asked to explain what is the purpose of analysis activity. Any kind of conceptual question from the lecture slides or you can be asked some kind of applied question about the diagrams that have been discussed in the lecture slides. You can be given a case study and you can be asked to, for example, for example, write use cases. Now, why we are asking this? Because you have already practiced all of these things. You have already practiced them in system analysis. You have already practiced them in your senior project one report. So you can be given a case study. And you can be asked to make any diagram like use case, data flow, ER, or any diagram that is in the lecture slide. You can be given a diagram and you can be asked to explain it. You can be given an incomplete diagram and you can be asked to complete it. Uh, you can be given a diagram and you can be asked to find problems with that diagram. Any such kind of question can come from this third part. So first part, about the components of the report, about the planning, about these kind of things, 
only question that would come would be from the lecture slides. Second part, literature review referencing there can be short questions or there can be, I, I come to the report part, there can be short questions or there can be applied questions about the referencing style. And third part, analysis and design, there can be short conceptual questions or there can be questions about the diagram which are explained in the lectures. All the lectures are recorded. You can download the recordings, you can look at the lecture slides material, you can prepare accordingly. It's not a very big material, no more than 100 or 110 slides. You can easily prepare them and your exam can be very good. So these are three sections that you should be preparing. Project submission, project file submission. Uh, Project file submission, you mean the project report that you have prepared? You mean that? Okay, uh, as far as my understanding is concerned, uh, all the project supervisors were supposed to deliver uh, project reports from their students last week. So you must have already submitted uh, the project report to your supervisor last week. Yes, you have to submit the report to your supervisor. Then your supervisor and an evaluation committee. Uh, then your supervisor and evaluation committee would uh, evaluate the project report and give you marks out of 60 marks. As far as attendance is concerned, I don't think anyone is considered absent. All the students are eligible to sit in the examination. I said there are going to be 20 MCQs, uh, 20 true false, and all the MCQs and true false would come from lecture slides. Well, uh, after evaluation, the, the evalu there are three members of evaluation committee. One member is your supervisor, two members are other doctors. Uh, the other members would evaluate your report. So whatever marks they will give, they will give equal marks to every member of the project team. Uh, supervisor will evaluate the project as well as the individual students based on their participation in the project, uh, how much they were attentive, who did how much of work, were uh, they often present to discuss or not, etc. So he can change marks. Your supervisor can change marks depending on who he thinks did more and who he thinks did less. After everyone has given their marks, those marks would be normalized into 60 marks. So your project report, whatever marks you will get, those would be one part. Second part would be senior project one exam of 40 marks. Whatever marks you get out of it, both of these marks would be added. That would become your total marks of senior project one course, uh, which will be given to you and the grade accordingly. No, there is going to be no presentation for senior project one. No presentation. No, senior project one reports are not going to be sent to me. Those are sent to the evaluation committees. Those evaluation committees will review and mark them. No, as I said, there are going to be 20 marks MCQ, 20 marks true false, and 40 marks short and applied questions. Right? So the total exam will be of 80 marks. These 80 marks will be scaled back to 40. Just as your final exam is of 100 marks, but its actual weightage in the final exam is 50. Similarly, your exam for senior project 1 will be of 80 marks and its contribution in your final marks would be 40. Is it clear now? Good.
प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट सबमिशन वुड बी मेड बाय द स्टूडेंट्स टू देयर सुपरवाइजर देन सुपरवाइजर विल फॉरवर्ड इट टू द इवेल्यूशन कमेटी and the evaluation committee and supervisors will finalize their marks and send to us so we will get the marks of your project report from your evaluation committee your responsibility is to deliver the report to the supervisor after that it is the work of supervisor Slides with the lecture would be sufficient to answer all MCQs, all true false, and short questions. But you should also practice working with the diagrams, UML diagrams, which have been explained in the lecture, which have been described in the lecture. You should also practice with the referencing styles, which have been described in the lecture. There will be applied questions about the UML diagrams. Uh, which have been explained which have been described in the lecture and referencing style which have been described in the lecture so these two things are applied remaining everything would come from the lecture any file in the blank question what does that mean no oh, oh sorry uh no there will be no fill in the blank there will only be mcqs and true false yes as i mentioned exam will come from lecture slides uh, there will be short questions that will come from lecture slides there will be true false that will come from lecture slides there will be mcqs that will come from lecture slides um but there are diagrams which have been described in the lectures you can be asked to apply those diagrams there can be an applied question about that and there are referencing styles which have been described in the lectures you can be asked to uh, practice those as well uh when well, we have uh, we have about four or five diagrams i think which we have discussed in the class uh which include use cases dfds er diagrams and perhaps one or two more we are only going to uh we are only going to cover those diagrams which have been described in the lectures no uh, the total exam weightage is 40 that is why the exam that you will get will be of 80 marks not of 100 marks okay out of that out of 80 marks 20 marks for mcqs 20 marks for true false so out of 40 20 marks go to true false and mcqs and remaining 20 marks go to short questions is it clear now i don't know what you call as long questions but there are going to be conceptual questions it can depend on uh, the length of the answer that can be expected from you uh, that uh, then there would be applied questions uh, that also depends on how complex it is so it can be long it can be small it can be both anything
No, it is a very small course. You know, uh, as I just mentioned, every week there are no more than seven eight slides. You can easily prepare them. It's no more than hundred hundred ten slides for the whole course and five lectures which I have recorded. Uh, so there is no study guide. You should prepare from the material that is good. No, 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 no. As I said, uh, all the MCQs and true parts are only coming from the lecture slides. There is no book, nothing. It's only the lecture slides. You prepare the lecture slides, all the MCQs, all the true parts get prepared. Well, before you before you start leaving, uh, and uh, if uh, if there are other questions, you would be able to ask that later. But one thing that I should say after that, if anyone wants to leave, they can leave. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for being with me throughout this course, for attending the classes when you have uh, when you had other classes, uh, for being here, for asking questions, for being patient with me, for being so respectful, responsive. Uh, I really appreciate. I hope we will continue this association uh, throughout our lives, inshallah. I wish you all the best for your exams for your senior project one, for your future exams and for your degree. May Allah succeed you in everything that you wish for. Uh, I hope to listen all the good things from you. Thank you so much everyone. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your being here with me. So now if anyone wants to leave, uh, they can leave now. Uh, my player, uh, I'm really honored. So there was a question, let me answer that question. What about short questions? As I said, there are going to be three kind of short questions. If it is only short questions, if it is only short questions, like about the parts of the report, uh, these are going to be from lecture slides. Then there are going to be applied questions as well. For example, you can be asked to draw, and draw a diagram or correct a diagram or write references or correct references or identify references. These are applied questions. The answer of the applied question is not in the lecture slides. You need to prepare these two things. Number one, the referencing styles. You need to practice them. The referencing styles which have been discussed in the lecture, you need to practice them. Number two, the diagrams which have been mentioned, described in the lectures, you need to practice them. So these two applied questions you need to practice outside lecture slides. Remaining everything would come from lecture slides. My player, so I would be here if you have any questions. I would be here for next 20 minutes or so. If you don't have any questions, you are free to leave and prepare for other things. Uh, I'll see you all inshallah in next week, next semester. Referencing styles and diagrams. Yes, referencing styles that we have described. In the classes, there are three referencing styles, APA style, MLA style, Chicago style. You can be asked questions about them. You can be asked to write them. You can be asked to find problems with the examples that we would give them. You can be asked to give differences between them. Any kind of question can come. Second, diagrams. There are four or five diagrams that we have described. We have described in the classes. Include use case diagrams, ER diagrams, DF diagrams. Uh, I think include deployment diagram. There are four or five diagrams. There can be questions about them also. Yeah, the slides that you should be reviewing are present in the form of video lectures on Blackboard. Uh, these slides are also present in the recordings that are of my lectures. You can download the recordings and you can see slides from there as well.
Also, Ahmed, I think, is uh, has prepared a Dropbox folder uh, where all the lecture slides are. This is a great thing that he has done. You can also uh, find all the uh, lectures from there. Yeah, you can go to this folder and you can download from here also. Yeah, there can be conceptual questions about the modeling, mod, um, modeling approaches, conceptual modeling, physical modeling. As I said, anything which is present in the lecture slides, there can be a question about them. Me too. I hope for the best as well. Inshallah, and you will do your best. Well, as I said, if it is a short question, if it only asks you to explain something, yes, it will come from lecture slide. If it asks you to explain, to write references, or if it asks you to draw diagrams, that will be applied. That can come from anywhere. Well, my advice is go through all the lecture slides and recordings, listen to them carefully. One, two, practice uh, referencing styles, the three referencing styles that we have discussed, and practice the diagrams which are described in the lecture slides. That is my advice.